Hi, Shane. Hola, mi amiga. <laughs> How are you? I am doing my best to be my best. How are you doing? Oh, that's wonderful. I Hey, I woke up this morning. Facts. So we're just getting down to the basics. Like, yeah. I woke up. So, winning. Yes. Hashtag winning. winning. Hashtag oh, that reminds winning. me of Charlie Sheen. Remember when he was winning? Yeah, when he was giving everybody AIDS and still getting jobs. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, hey, if anybody ever wants to know what does a white privilege look like, look at Charlie Sheen getting on national TV, admitting to fucking and giving oh, everybody AIDS and never getting into trouble. How the hell does Charlie Sheen because never you get know caught up what? in the Me Too movement? What when the I, fuck? When I got trained by Aid Atlanta, they were talking about, um, oh, what's what's Gilead? I, sh I should be ashamed of myself. Whatever they're, I know what the prep is. Discovery for prep. Truvada. Truvada. Truvada for HIV. Yeah. That it you, it's undetectable. But they were still saying it would be a crime to have sex with someone unbeknownst. If you yeah, were HIV positive, unbeknownst murder. to them. Yeah, that's a crime. Yeah. To and be he, HIV positive and, and, not, 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 and have sex with someone and with them not knowing. White yeah. privilege like a motherfucker. God damn boy. Must be nice. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well. well, you know what? He, he sold his... um. So I mean, what? Yeah. But yeah. you know he would get all the residuals from two and a half men, two and, and he half showed men. it off. He sold he's he sold it off for a fraction of the price. So I I can't imagine he still. I hope he has money, but I don't think he has money like he could have had. You know, like friends. Yeah. Because mm. they all they make like twenty million dollars a year. Goddamn residuals. Shame, boy. Yeah. Just bootleg ass, uh, living single. You know what? What's Who funny is that I, when single. when Friends came out August twenty second, I didn't know this. Well, when Living Single came out August twenty second, nineteen ninety seven, ninety yeah, whatever. And both Warner Brothers. Mm -hmm. I did not know that, but I, yep. knew, I remember the guy saying, "I want a show like that." But dude, you had a show like that. You had a show like that. Living Living Single, single. literally and had Living Single. And Friends then was like, came out August twenty second, the following year. Yeah, one year later, because he saw how big Living Single was, and was like, "Oh, well, let me see if I can do this for the white folk." And put and, and I love Friends. So I'm not gonna talk shit because I still watch Friends. And Joey was hilarious. Joey and Phoebe were the funniest. I know you got nigga nigga eyes, nigga ears. Yeah, I never really fuck with Overton. Overton is Sinclair because they're basically that's Overton and Sinclair. You know what I'm saying? And so I fuck with no. Overton and Sinclair. Yes, it was. Oh, we're gonna do it. You know what? We're not gonna talk about it. We're gonna do an episode where we compare friends and living single. We're gonna hey, here's a preview of what's to come. Coming up, we have a living single versus friends episode. That's what we're gonna do. I don't think I remember enough. Well, I still watch why's my why do I feel like I'm not? I still watch um I still watch friends. I still watch Living Single. Do I've never I can say with one thousand percent I stream it on um streaming services. Living single was funny. I never watched. I've never watched the full episode of Friends. I've seen clips. Really, I've I, wa never watched I watched it in reruns, and it is it hold it holds up to me. It. I couldn't. Every time I see up. it, I just feel dirty. I really? just feel like yeah, because it is um, literally the the caucus the Caucasian whitewashed version of Living Single. Like they didn't even try to change anything up. Same city, same scenario, same you, group, same number of friends. Like it is literally the same fucking different, show. Different boroughs. Different boroughs yeah. and different skinned people. Yeah. That's it. Now, did you ever see the Kanye music video where it's black friends? Mm -mm. It 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 I can't remember the song, but Issa Rae's in it. Um who else is in it? I'll have to Google it. But and it's it's black friends, but it's just but it's more it's it's you have to see it, but it's yeah. not trying to do black friends. It's trying to the hypocrisy that a black um, friend yeah, is exactly. living single, blah blah blah. Yeah, I can't remember the song. It I think it came out in like 2017. I just I literally just came across it um last week. So anyway. All right, so who are we, Shane? Oh, who are we, man? We are two seasoned uncensored corporate veterans. <laughs> <laughs> Who is here to impart wisdom we receive from lessons learned and hope that you don't make the same mistakes that we did. But if you do, if you think you grown and you want to go ahead and make these same mistakes, well, we hope that you can just laugh at yourself while you're doing it. Because we ain't laughing at you. We laughing with you. Right. Yeah. But but don't. Don't, don't do, do it. Because it. it's don't a decision. It. It's a choice. Don't do it. So um, 
I have to ask you this because this is, oh, first of all, sorry for all the gray. I'm supposed to get my hair colored today. I just, I would, if I could have wore a hat today, I would have like, Don't. oh my gosh. Just let it all gray out. Oh, give please. me, I, give us that Della Reese touch by Angel. You oh my saying? gosh. Yeah. I'm probably the same age as Della Reese when she did that. <laughs> <laughs> and Angel. I'm older than the Golden Girls. That's uh, for sure. Give um, us that. Which ain't is no way. What the fuck? Yeah, ain't no way yes. you can be older. I am. Yo, them bras look like they was like 89. Yo, they, they look old as shit. They were in their 50s. You know what? That's like when people look back and in the 80s. And Estelle Getty was the youngest, and she played Sophia, who was the oldest. That's wild. Mm -hmm. Like, older actors who were like 30 or whatever back in the day look like what would be like 50, 60 today. My grandmother, you know? I have a picture of her. It's like a prom. She looks like she's 30. She was a teenager. <laughs> Part of it too, she was busty and all the makeup, yeah. you know, like yeah, the big kinda, hair and shit, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the hair, the makeup, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. Um, what was I was going to say something I can't remember, but oh. how was your weekend? Oh, man. What was oh, this weekend? oh no, the color, oh the color, oh Jason's always saying so and so. You like you color your hair? Why do you color your hair? You should just stop coloring your hair. I was like, I can't throw a rock in my neighborhood without hitting somebody. Who colors their hair? I was like, everybody mm. colors their hair. So we'll go Man, this is somebody old. I'm like, that person's hair is colored. They're, why can't I color my hair? Everybody else he wants you. Hair. He wants you gray. No, he just wants to try to make me feel bad or something. That man wants you grayed out. He does bro. not want me gray. I'm telling no. you, there's no, a there's doesn't. there's a lot of older, not even older, there's just a lot of women on IG and who have the full gray, and that I shit is care. popping. Let them know. It's not to me, gray or white. <laughs> gray. No, that's not. And I've seen there's this lady. She's really good looking, but her hair is white or something. I'm not. I'm. That's not for me. Right. Now, I'm my gra even my grandmother, Granny said, she. Oh, you know what? My grandmother though, she stopped dyeing her hair when she was in her seventies, early seventies. She said these gray hairs get me a lot of stuff. <laughs> you know she's my stuff she meant dick but that's not what my <laughs> but she volunteered at the center with like 80 you know 80 90 year olds with oh, black they be hair fucking. oh not talking about that shame oh, them old black folks hair. Be that's what the stuff she was talking about when you no, said that gray hairs get her a lot of stuff she, she meant that people that help her day. they take her luggage they do oh, stuff sure for they, her that's yeah i'm sure they do do stuff for her. them old men be taking out they they take out their teeth they go to town on granny yum 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 yum, yum. <laughs> <laughs> don't talk about my grandmother <laughs> oh my gosh okay so we're not even gonna ask how your weekend was <laughs> where is my, where's my gong show sound like stop it um oh is, is this something now <gasps> yeah there you go <laughs> um, congratulations to usher raymond the fourth yeah, um, got the uh super bowl, bowl. 58. that's how if i can't remember how old i am i just think of the super bowl and take mm -hmm. a year off because it's you practically funny. the same year Hilarious. <laughs> I can't remember. And if I let Jackson tell me, he's been telling me I'm 60 for the last five years. I'm not 60. She's not so 60, yo. So, and it's in Vegas, so he doesn't have to go far. Well, so I heard his residency will still be. I don't cool think he lives in Vegas. He lives in Atlanta. Well, he lives here, but I mean, the resident, yeah. he's been there for the residency. Yeah. So. so, someone said something very interesting. They said that Usher Raymond is the male the Beyonce. And I'm like, hmm. He's been around longer than Beyonce. I'm like, you know what? Because they're talking about how Beyonce's tour is breaking numbers and then how Usher Raymond's residency is breaking numbers. Mm -hmm. And now Usher has a Super Bowl. And they're saying like Usher's yeah. second half of his career is very reflective of how Beyonce. But is this Beyonce's second half of her career? Because this is would still be her career. This is still a new album that she's touring yeah, on she right go. now. Yeah. So I don't know if it's still the same, but they're both at their like pinnacle of power right now. He Usher, definitely is. Yeah. Well, Usher she is, she's, a, she's a. Um, I have, I've, I've never seen her live, but I do, my good friend of my sister of mine said that her last tour before this one was the, the best on the run tour with Jay-Z. Yeah. Yes. I can't wait for the next on the run tour. That's the, that's she said that fire. was the best one. So, I mean, she's not, you, I don't know if she had foot surgery. I don't think she copped to it, but she's not moving around as much as she I did like, before. Yeah. She, she did before. I, I just think maybe she something's healing or whatever. I don't know. Um, I'm not yeah, gonna make it age because people older than her move around, and I don't know. 
Hmm, Usher is definitely um Usher is doing his thing. So can't wait for the Super Bowl. He has a lot to live up to. You know, we had Riri last year, and Riri mm. was amazing, despite what some haters on this podcast may think. Riri was spectacular in her. I pregnancy I flow. adore her. I adore her. She's not not the way you talk about her Super Bowl performance. You don't because it was kind of boring. Wow, her presence is not boring. Her presence I alone. I feel like was, yes. That's I, it. I'm not that's ASAP you Rocky, be. or as, as I used to call him ASAP. <laughs> That guy. That he's so he's so handsome. Just like he said in that video, he's handsome. He's very handsome. That's the guy that gets Rihanna pregnant twice. God damn boy. Why? Think, he's a he's a stand up dude. I'm saying, but I would I wish Drake had gotten shit together earlier. Drake. But, my God, listen. Drake had a chance Ugh. to had Drake had Drake a chance to have Serena. He's a and kid. That's and how Riri, immature he is. That's and Rihanna. As his baby mamas, that both shows. of them wanted to be his baby mamas. He he circled the block twice with each of them. Like they both was like, "Oh, come back, let's do it again." I know and Serena's like, "Thank twice. you, Jesus." Okay, he fumbled the back twice. Both of them both are of probably them. like, "Thank you, Lord." Like that's not for you. And mm-hmm. then he ended up getting a porn star pregnant, but that's crazy. And you know how powerful Drake is. Where it is, how powerful? Allegedly, you can't find any of his baby mama sex tapes online anymore. They have sex tapes. No, like she used to do porn. Oh, oh! It all disappeared. Yeah, yeah, that shit wiped. How can you do that? Because that stuff doesn't go away. Yeah, apparently, it does. Wow! So that his child won't, won't got to see grow it. up. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Allegedly. Spook Allegedly. Spook well, spook I'm not going to do a search for it. So. Allegedly. I, 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 I haven't come across it. any of it during my searches. So. I'm married, um, so we I search. Oh my gosh, we're so stop. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is all over TikTok. How often do you think about the Roman Empire? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Listen, my wife asked me that. <laughs> we were cracking up because I was like, yo, at least three times a day. At least three times you a day. You do? Most definitely. Listen. You think about the Roman Empire three times a day. Here's why. Here's okay. why I think about the Roman Empire three times a day. Number one. Them motherfuckers. <laughs> decided Constantine and the Council of Nicaea was like, oh, shit, we need to make more money. How are we going to make more money? Let's create a religion. We call it Christianity. Put it together and tax everybody to pay us, pay the Roman Catholic Church a tax for being a part of this religion. And if you decide you don't want to be a part of this religion, we're going to fucking kill you. We're like gonna they, you. <laughs> we are going to kill you and call you a witch if you're not a part of our religion. And they went around the world indoctrinating everybody into Christianity all for money. And it worked and it still worked to this day. The Roman Catholic Church is the most powerful body of of any entity in this world. Don't think the Roman Empire went away. They just all condensed it into the Roman Catholic Church. So like, you, all right, that's number one. Number two. That's it. That's one, two, three, that's four, it. One, five, two, and three. three. I just Do think, you like think that about that daily? over and over again. Yes, because look how powerful Christianity is. Look up, yo! These these dudes created Trish. They created a religion. <laughs> they they created a religion and made everybody follow it. And then, well, look at him. Look at what Henry the Eighth did, though. He broke away from the Catholic Church because he wanted to marry Anne Boleyn. Okay, but that doesn't change the power of the Roman Catholic Church. It's still the most powerful body. And then I also think about how they. Uh, you know, have all these philosophers, the Galileos and all these folks who are mm-hmm. deemed all these um, amazing minds of the past, right? When in reality, these men went down to ancient Kemet and studied under the philosophers of Kemet, which was Egypt. They mm-hmm. studied, they learned, they brought all these philosophers and they back to Timbuktu. Into the, they went to mm-hmm. Timbuktu, studied mm-hmm. at the universities. Yeah. Then they brought all this back to Europe. And then the Roman Catholic, the Roman Empire sent Alexander the Great and other generals into commit to burn the motherfuckers down. Right. They went, they collected all the knowledge, all the information they could, mm-hmm. and then burned that bitch down so nobody else could have it. And then they deemed themselves, they deemed themselves wise and all knowing after getting all the information is- from, 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 from Africa and getting all this shit from Africa and commit. They burned all that motherfucker down so it doesn't exist anymore. Mm-hmm. And then they claimed it off for themselves. The Roman Empire was gangster as fuck. That is they, gangster. They is the most heinous, yeah. just cold. It's like we're not gonna ass. live and let live. We're gonna nah. take, we're gonna take your stuff, and then we're and gonna then, call it our own. Yeah, yeah and then destroy it. 
I can destroy you. And then you don't get you. Yo, yo, thank you so much. Because if you're still around, you can build it. You can build it. Exactly. Thank you so much for being so gracious and teaching us. We appreciate it. To show you how much we appreciate you, we're gonna kill and pillage and burn down all your shit. And so that's why I think about the Roman Empire three times a day because they some heinous ass motherfuckers. So what time? What times of the day do they vary? It depends. That? It depends okay. on what's going on. I hear something on TV. I may see a TikTok. Somebody talking about church or prayer or some shit. Or... So anytime you hear about religion, you think of the Roman. You immediately. Oh, oh okay. immediately. Or anytime I hear somebody talking about these great philosophers like Galileo and all this shit, immediately think about it. Because I always think about who taught them, right? Mm-hmm. We always be like, oh, these persons know so much. Well, who taught them? Because somebody did had they... to. somebody taught them because they didn't wake up knowing this shit. So who taught them? And then we think about who taught them, and then think about what happened to those people who taught them. What happened to those people who decided to teach them? They got killed. And they, they got, yeah, you know. So I think about, the, yo, that's, I think about the Roman Empire wow. at least three times a well, day. Well, then, I never think of it. Somebody said, I think about it when I'm in Italy and I ride past the Coliseum. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like funny. once in a lifetime. Okay. All right. So this next story is sad, it's tragic. If I laugh, it's just charging to my head, not my heart. Because it's we laugh so we don't freaking cry. crazy. First of all, don't Google Florida woman mm. killed by an alligator. Don't do it. Because Shane told me about the story. I Googled it and found a slew of other stories. I'm like, but what I will say, this story isn't about that. But if you have a, a small dog. Or a dog period. Please stay from stay away from bodies of water in Florida. Yeah. Please, please, do please, please. Stay away from the stay hills away of, from bodies of water. The hills in California for the coyotes, and the bodies of water in Florida for the alligators. Yeah, because they're getting God. snatched up. So, a 41 year old woman was found dead after a Florida alligator is spotted with a body in its mouth. Nigga was just walking down the street with a body, bro. Like Florida, different. The alligator, this 14 foot alligator. Was chilling, walking down the street with a body in its mouth. Like, yeah, like, this you, is what we do every day. Can you imagine the first person that drove past that shit and saw that? Be like, what the they're fuck probably what? like, <laughs> like, ain't no way. Yeah, that's yeah. ain't it's no. It's like way. talk about when you have no natural predators. Okay? Yeah, like ain't no way. You are top of the food chain. God damn. Um, yeah, thirteen foot, eight and a half inch male. The alligators have been spotted in the area before, um, but she had never. The neighbor said they had never seen one that large. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! So, yeah, that's yeah. yeah. It was in Largo yeah. in the Tampa Bay area. That is just absolutely yeah. insane. But you know what? Like, I saw this um video. And it was a bear, and it was on somebody's porch, and it was. And people were like, oh, and like thought it was fun. Like the bear's chilling. He, he seemed so tired. Like he, if you encroach on there, they have nowhere to go. He was like, oh, let me just lay my head down. That's He was sighing. I cried because I was like, he, they take, tired. If you take the land. Where are these animals supposed to go? And then you kill them for doing something that animals do. So, yeah. 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 Don't fuck with bears, especially what? black bears. I saw a video no, with a black, black bear, bear killing. I saw a black bear They're killing usually... a brown bear, and that a black shit was bear killing a brown bear. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that shit was. Um... Oh no. Yeah. I don't want to hear about that. That's not nice. We when we were in a, we every couple of years we used to go up into North Georgia and get we rent a house twice. We rented the same house when it was first built, and then like several years later, and um, I think this. The first time we got it, Jason it had a big deck, so it had three levels. And so he were the big deck had a big fireplace, and he was out smoking a cigar was at night. And um, he called me, and I came out. He was like, because there was a, a a like a feeder for deer, and there was a black bear eating the food. And he's like, you know, listen, be quiet. And uh, we watched it, tried to videotape it, it was dark, and I went and got the kids. I was like, you have to be very quiet. And they came out. We watched it for like 15 minutes. And then somebody made a noise and it ran off. But usually they'll run off. But if, I guess if they get used to people, um, they they won't. But 
I yeah, don't think no, they were. I'm sorry. You were right. It's I just looked. It was up the reversed. Beer. Just, yeah, it's the brown beer killing the black bear. Yeah, black, black bears, bears are really nice. So yeah, soft. Yeah. It's a grizzly bear. That wouldn't grizzly be like, brown bear. I wouldn't go up and touch a black bear. But yeah, usually, usually they run off when they hear noises. But grizzly bear, you have to make yourself really big. Right? Yeah, this grizzly bear was yeah. fucking this. Uh, oh, black I don't want to hear that. That sounds sad. On okay. the side of the road too, next to that highway. Oh, oh my no. gosh, that's fucking no. this. I'm looking at the video now. This shit. Is okay, crazy. please turn it off. Stop. <laughs> Stop, stop, I can't. My friend, my I, I'm already not sleeping at night, so <laughs> I can't. Dude, if you um, anybody ever watched like Joe Rogan's podcast, he had this guy on there. Don't listen Hunter. to that motherfucker. I oh. listen to Joe Rogan all the time. I like Joe <laughs> Why? Rogan. Why? Because Joe Rogan was saying some truthful shit. Anyway, that's another point. Anyway, so he had this guy on there who got attacked by a grizzly bear. He was okay. in the woods and he told the story. Motherfucker, I've never been so nauseated in my life. Oh, like the way this bear, what what we saw in that movie with Leonardo DiCaprio when that bear I didn't fucked see that him movie. up. The bear, I didn't see that. It doesn't even compare. It doesn't even compare uh, to the real life story of what what this bear did. And it's like bear, at the end of the legend, the Legends of the Fall, where yeah. Brad Pitt's fighting with the bear. The bear kills him, and I saw. I never, never saw, saw that one. No, we you know can't me. be friends. You, you know me, Tristan. Brad Pitt as Tristan, I loved him. And I think Julia Ormond mm. loved him too. I think she did. I have a three character minimum. If there's not at least three black characters, in, then I can't watch the show. I can't three? Watch show. That's I tough. Three. I know. That's why my that's why my show watching is very limited. Oh I, I wow. I because you well, know, I can't relate. I gotta be able to relate to the storyline. And I you know what? Think, I can't relate. I think to... you can you can relate to being a human. Yeah, no, because your human experience and my human experience are different as a white guy. Yeah, but it's completely different because you get to yeah, do shit like Charlie thing, Sheen does. That yeah, I but certain do. thing. Well, you do you want to do that? Do you want to get? I mean, no, but I can't do that. I can't do. It. I can't. Re I can't relate. It. I can't relate to the feeling of hopping out my car yelling at the police. I can't relate. Oh, to that. Well, I can't, not, I can't relate I to that feeling. I you know. That. Mm. Well, I re for some reason I rewatched The Haunting of Hill House. Ah, that came okay. out in 2018. Yes, I have seen that one. My mom okay. didn't watch it. She loves and that, movies. See, I didn't find it scary. I found it sad. Wow. It was like a haunting tale. It was a tale. It was, it was to, I mean, it was supposed to be about, it was a, a family who was haunted to me mm -hmm. versus the house being haunted. But I rewatched it. But, um, and now, and it made me so sad all over again because <laughs> I forgot, like, I knew the father, you know, anyway. Yeah. So I'm not, this is a spoiler alert. If you haven't seen it by now, people, it yeah, came out 2018. Yeah. I knew the father died. I just couldn't remember all the stuff. And you know what I didn't know? Like, I didn't know why the tall man, who he was, but he was William Hill. Why he kept appearing and shit? Well, he kept appearing because he, he he's the house. Hat. Yeah. Well, the kid took his hat. He wanted his hat back. Is that what it is? Mm-hmm. He, he wanted the fucking hat back. Mm -hmm. And he was William okay. Hill. He was, he was in a, he was his, his parents put him in a saying, he was crazy, put him in a saying, saying asylum. He met Poppy, who was a crazy lady and brought her back to the house. So. You know, we had a big thing about that this weekend. My wife was uh wanting me about to come watch haunted some scary movie. movie. No, she was watching some scary movie. I don't really fuck with scary movies heavy like that. I used to, okay. I used to love them. And then we went and watched the exorcism of Emily Rose. I never saw when that. it came out. That shit ruined my life. I could never yeah. go back to scary movies after that. That exorcism uh -huh. of Emily Rose was the most intense psychological horror film really? I've ever seen in my life. And because it's based on a true story. So uh -huh. these are like, so this shit actually really fucking happened. And that shit just ruined me. I could never go back. Well, ever. I watched The Exorcist for the first time in 2000. Well, I watched part of The Exorcist in like 01. I was in, I remember I was in San Francisco. Jason and I were there. He was out running and it was on. I was like, Ugh, nah, no. <laughs> and then in 18, my my girlfriend Kelly came to town after my dad passed away. And we we watched, we had a day of just watching movies. It was like, if it was the Olympic event, we would have won gold and an extras was one of them and while there were some funny parts um it was scary and now they have that new exorcist movie out that just the music alone to me is scary mm -hmm. exorcist music is scary and that yeah so anyway. did you know that the exorcist of course i'm sure you know but that there's a curse on the movie because they used actual real human remains while no i thought that was, that was poltergeist was that poltergeist that's poltergeist. What was the reason for the curse on the exorcist? Because they're saying at I least didn't know four there was a people. Curse. Yeah, at Ellen least four Burst people still alive. At least four people who have been linked to that film 
have been killed in some weird oh, manner. Oh, I didn't know that. Including Ellen... the, uh, let me see, who was it? It said Jack uh, Mag- 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 McGuarren or whatever, the film director, okay. Burke Dennings. Um, the Burke Dennings was killed by a plague. And then Reagan McNeil was also killed by a plague as well. Who was Reagan McNeil? Uh, his character was attacked by the possessed child and used her superhuman strength to break the neck in front of oh, her bedroom okay. window. Do you know that, um, what's the girl's name that was in the play in the, who was in the exorcist? What's her name? I don't know. Um, what is her name? Jeez. She broke her back while they were filming it. Mm. The scene where they had her like, you know, did you ever see it? Yeah, I saw the exorcist. Where she was being jostled on the bed, broke her back. Are you serious? Like really broke her back? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let me see Linda Blair. Is. Linda Blair. Looking it up. Yeah, it's Linda yeah. Blair. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Linda Blair. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. So there I would be not, there's a remake now where it's two girls. And um my my um favorite, my my husband calls him a loud lounge singer. What's his name? Leslie Odoms. He's in it. I like I would I couldn't be in a movie like that. And I'm a Christian. Yeah. I could not be in a movie like that. I could, I could not. I could not. Anyway, but anyway, I say that I rewatched, I rewatched the haunting. No, of yeah, no, not just so, not just Linda Blair. Also, Ellen Burstyn suffered a back injury as well. Oh, she suffered. Say? Yeah, they said uh, Ellen Burstyn and Linda Blair both suffered spinal injuries while being hoisted in the air by the harness in the movie. Oh, she's and, in the, she's in the new one too. Ellen Burstyn is. And they're saying the house that they used for the movie burned down in 1972. The house is in Georgetown. Yep. The Reagan's family home burned down in 1972 after a bird flew into the circuit box. So what, how, why is it cursed? Why are they saying it's cursed? Because all this shit happened on, on the movie while they were trying to film the movie. No, no, no. I mean, but what's the reason? Like, oh. The guys say use the human remains. Right. So. Again, uh, they're not giving a reason for it. Oh. Yeah. They're just talking couldn't. about all the weird shit that happened. Yeah. While... Yeah. Yeah. No, they're giving a reason. That's fucked up. Yeah, all them 80s movies. I'm sure they probably use some That's real 70. Movies soon. No. I was in first grade when Poltergeist came out. That's 70. 73. Mm-hmm. I was in yeah. first grade. Um, I remember I was like, I want to go. They're like, you can't go. Yeah, probably not the best thing to do. <laughs> I love scary movies, though. I did. Now, Ariel and her friend would go see The Nun, too. She said it wasn't that scary. She said it wasn't scary, though. She loves scary movies. So, Did we see The Nun? I don't know if we saw The Nun. We saw my kids... They watched some, the one where the mom was trying to kill all the kids in the house or whatever. Mm-hmm. I walked past them watching that the other day with their mom. I'm like, yo, what you got my kids watching? She was like, I watched watch that. Them. That was scary. That's, um, uh, that's the one with like those, that fam, that husband and wife team. I yeah. Remember. Like yeah. they're all, the, the, the dolls and all the other stuff. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. My yeah. kids fuck with that stuff every day. Yeah. They're I you, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I need to sleep at night. Mm mm. No, that's okay. Um, anyway, I I was saying I think I rewatched the haunting of Hill House. I don't know why I rewatched it, but um, the writers' strike has tentatively reached a deal. So the writers uh, have tentatively have a tentative deal with studios to end the strike after nearly one hundred and fifty days. Because I don't God. know if I was going to start watching. So Dude, I need my Chicago Wednesdays back. All my Chicago. Oh, what's Chicago Wednesday? Chicago Mad, Chicago PD, Chicago Fire, like all those shows. Like oh, I need you, them back. You, you know what? Sh- Chicago PD, the black dude. Mm-hmm. He's on a show called Southside. Oh, on uh, Southside's on Showtime or HBO? HBO. HBO, yeah. Well, I'll tell you that. You're welcome. Because he plays a drug dealer. He is hilarious. The whole show is a scream. That's Southside is, I'm that is watch it. <laughs> it's so funny. Oh, my. Whenever he does a commercial right now, whenever I see him, I just start laughing because he's so funny on Southside. I never took him as a funny person. Oh, I want to see him. So oh, funny. that's what's up. Oh my gosh, he's okay. there's a spades episode. It's oh my gosh, you he are got welcome. range. He got oh, range. Okay, he, range. he got oh range. God. The show is so it's a gift. It is a gift. It's so funny. So anyway, That's what's up. um, let's see. There's still I'm just trying to see if there's any any language in here that says it says they're close. It just and it yeah. says it's good, but nothing here to say 
exactly when I guess the, the short the stoppage started in May, early May. So yeah, it's like there's things that I watch. I'm like, hello, did y'all not get this fixed? I mean, weren't you done with that? You had a plenty, plenty of time to work that out. I, I was watching the Daily Show. Did you now? Do you watch Daily Show? I used to kind of sort of with Trevor Noah. Okay. It depends on who his guest was. Well, okay. of course, if he had a guest of color, I was watching. Okay, because you know, you know he's several... gone, and they were they were yeah. had they were doing new hosts every week. Somebody would, and it was Dulce Sloan. It was her week, and that Monday she killed it. That's she killed it, and then didn't, Tuesday they were on strike. <laughs> didn't Desus get an episode in there too? Did he? Yeah, I thought Desus was a host uh, at some I point in time. I know he hosted I something at some point in time. Oh, I don't, I don't know, because they they did a bunch of them. They, they I mean, a lot of people did well. Um. They, oh, he either. hosted Jimmy Kimmel. He hosted Jimmy. Oh, Kimmel. did he win? Uh, I know. Let's see. When was seven? I know, but yeah, I was like, I know Desus are out here doing stuff. Uh, kind of, you know, separate himself from Mero and whatnot. Yeah, trying I mean, to. It's, it's gotta be. I know we talk about them a lot. It's gotta be tough to. It was last year, last August. Because they finish each other's sentences. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they would say stuff, and the other person would say, "It's just like that's priceless." Like. I couldn't admit I couldn't do this without you. You know fact. what I mean? I'm like, it's a fact. Much less it like, be over. It's not, and then it's like it's not even over us. Like we good, but then somebody else that we know is right. causing this shit to, yeah, to fuck yeah, up. No, they fucking right. up the bag. God damn, man. Yeah, like no, but they good boys. Just get back to get back to basics. Facts. Get us back. Nothing, nothing is that bad that you can't make that you can't forgive and forget or forget. No, no. There is something, one of our current events that is that bad. I could never forgive and move on. Our one last our thing that we're going to, yeah. Oh, the, oh, so, gosh. what you may not know is that my young daughter is a gymnast. She's been a gymnast for like six years. And she's pretty fucking good at what she does. And if you don't know about gymnastics, you have individual competition, but then you're also in the team competition as well. So, at the end of the meet, you get called up, you get your individual medals, and then the top three teams get a medal as well. And when your team places, everybody on that team gets a medal. Everybody on the team gets a medal. And now a video has surfaced from a competition meet last year in Ireland in which one of the judges who was presenting the medals to the team that won decided to skip over the black girl and not give her her medal. And these are little girls. These are little girls. They can't be no more older than eight, nine years old. Yeah. Now, as as a black father in the gymnast world, I can tell you ain't a lot of us out there. It ain't. If you compare the numbers, we may be like 20, 30 percent, if that much of mm -hmm. us in the gymnast world and much less when they. Um, and as you get older, of course, it fades out. So yeah. this was one little black girl on this team of all white girls. Oh, and. God. The judge, it's not a mistake, it's not an error. She looked at the she looked at the girls in front of this girl, gave them their medals, looked at the black girl, then stepped to the side and gave the next white girl her medals and gave proceeded to give medals to all the other white girls and never went back to give the black girl her medal. It wasn't a mistake. She purposely did it. And they tried to And then to, they doubled down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Listen. That that's unforgivable to me. I I it's know my, my wife. My wife would have put hands on that judge. Yeah. I know for a fact my wife would have put. So you could see the hurt in that little girl's face. Yeah. My wife would have put hands on that judge for doing yeah. that shit because it was purposeful. It was like it was malicious. It's like what is what a is child, wrong? A child. A child. Yeah. Scar yeah. them for life. Well, hopefully she, that'll be her motivate. You know what I mean? Like your origin story. Yeah, that's her. Like, origin why story, are you right? such a beast? Like because, because when I was this seven, this bitch. <laughs> His motherfucker here. It, yo, I'd be like, yo, when we get big and famous, I'd be like, yo, find her and make her come put this medal right. around my neck. Right. Every competition I go to, find that judge and make mm -hmm. them put a medal around my fucking neck. You were the time. villain in my origin story. Like Facts. That. Yep. Oh, gosh. That's terrible. Absolutely terrible. Um, all right. Here's a, I guess here's something that I guess we could all use. It is. A few hundred million how, dollars. Yeah. And tens yeah. and twenties. Facts. <laughs> How to stop scrolling. Here's here's how to curb your phone addiction. I have done this. I wonder if it's working. But you know what messes me up is that I'm not scrolling during the day. 
But at night, ooh, that night I'm scrolling. If I wake up in the middle of the night, I watch something. Mm -hmm. I turn something on. I try to find something mindless that I don't care and won't want to rewind just to fall asleep to. And I wake up in the morning like, what was that? So that messes up my screen time. But um, so anyway, there's there's tools and apps that can help for that. First of all, and I've done this, turn off your notifications. Do you turn your notifications off? Yeah, that's why I have so many unread text messages because I don't turn them on. I literally have like 357 unread text messages. Unread? See, I, I read... I read my text messages, but not that many people text me because I'm not a texter. I try to text mm -hmm. the people that I think text. Like I thought you're under your millennial. I thought the millennials <laughs> like to text, but that's not the way to get you. The way to get you is like through. Yeah, I'm not a you. You Instagram. need to call I'm me like, or call you or like, call me or IG. I'm like you could send me stuff on IG and it it'll die on the vine because I'm like <laughs> I'm not checking mail on or messages on IG. <laughs> Like, That's funny. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it says the first for a start, you should turn off push notifications on social media apps. Yeah. It's like, do you, do you really need to be instantly reminded when someone likes your Instagram post or retweets your tweet? No, I don't need any of that, but you know what? I do get, I do get the notifications about tweets and I don't want them because it's, it's our two live recruiters account. And I, I don't want them. I don't. You know? I, I love Coach Prime as much as the next person, but I don't need to. Yeah, read, don't need to be updated read. every time. Or Jamel Hill, because with Jamel Hill, I love her, but I hate the people that follow her. They follow her just to troll. To hate, her. yo, my god! Like, what is wrong? Like, what is wrong with your life? I feel like Jamel Hill followers might be 60, 40 haters. Oh, like, most they, of them. She because, said something. They're like, I mean, she could say the sky was blue. They'd be like, nope, it's red with a dash of purple. I mean. They totally just follow her just to hate on her. To hate on her. I, is that power? or is, that, I think that is. Because, I, mean, I mean, either way, you're still in following. Their, living in their minds rent free. Either I way, mean, she's still getting them checks for, for them followers that she got. Yeah. Losing, right. losing her and Carrie Richardson was a big bag fumble by ESPN. What'd you Jamel, say? Well, Jamel Hill and Carrie Richardson. Um, Who's Carrie Richardson? Carrie was like very Barbie-esque black girl who was on ESPN. Her and Jamel had their own little show. On um, oh, did they fire her? Yeah, she left. Uh, she left ESPN and Jamel left ESPN and Michael. Jamel got Michael fired, Hill. right? Well, I like to say she left because you know, I mean, okay. she's she stood ten toes down on what she believed in and she didn't try to wave from what it. Carrie did too, or yeah, exactly. Was, okay, yeah, and so they both were just you know, great, great representation of black women in sports. Mm -hmm. um, ESPN put in the bag, that's why ESPN struggling the way they are now. Well, they're having lots of money problems, right? They've let yeah. a lot of people go let tons of people go yeah um all right set daily limits once you've identified which apps are taking up the most of your time set yourself daily time limits for social media apps using screen time on the iphone or digital well-being on android so it says once you've reached your daily limit you'll be notified by a pop-up on your screen and you can extend this by setting the lock you know set, but you can, you can extend this setting to lock you out Oh, wow. Send the setting to lock you out of the apps completely once you've reached your limit. Then yeah, you got for our kids. Time. Really? And they yeah. can't they can't stop it? Nope. Okay. Christian has the code and she controls it all from her phone. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I tried to do that, but I had to get people to accept my invitation. <laughs> <laughs> That's, they don't tell you that part. Yeah. Trying to get teenagers to be like, uh, Hey, let me see your phone so I can accept this thing. You know, that's basically what you gotta do. Like, yo, let me get that phone from you real quick. You're always that phone. one. Jay was like, "What are you trying to do?" Like, I don't trust you with my phone. Um, nightly wind down. I have this. I have an app. Apple allows you to set apps um, that are always accessible, like the phone and the message after a certain hour of your choice. Um, but it grays out others. So I have that where at night it's like, okay, it's nighttime. Like at eleven, it's like, okay, wind down, stop. Um, this is what I have to do at um during um lent because i usually give up social media so it says delete your social media apps so that's what i do mm. i delete them but i i guess i kind of cheated because i still posted our videos but i wasn't reading anything you wasn't reading yeah you were just posting so you wasn't really I, on social media I yeah because i came like, back you're like oh the prodigal daughter returns <laughs> you wasn't <laughs> on it you was just posting. my child yeah <laughs> i was just posting so i guess i kind of cheated um replace with helpful apps 
Hmm. So mindfulness and meditation apps mm -hmm. can make the practices more accessible to beginners. Both meditation and mindfulness can help lower stress levels and help you get a better night's sleep. Headspace and Calm offer guided meditation practices focusing on breathing, sleep, and relaxation. So those are two apps to look into. I, if you have an Alexa or whatever, you can also play, you can have it, it to help you with your breathing. Yeah, like there's stuff you can do, um, or sounds like I like, I like, um, thunderstorms oh, with the nice. rain. Like, yeah, yeah, I like that. So I'm a beach sound. I like beach waves. Crashing. Oh yeah. I like that too. I like that too. Um, <laughs> let's see take take a time out sometimes the physical act of separation is what you need leave your phone at home when you go for a walk uh, now you get kidnapped? my mother was sick last week I, I think she had covid but she tested negative twice but i hear that the strain of covid you have to test you have to uh, swab your throat yeah my she mom sounds has terrible. It. she sounded terrible she was sick but she had to do something she had to go out to the bank and do some running around and I knew she had to do some running around, but I looked at her life 360 and it said she had been home. And I was like, she's not at home. Cause she said she was going out. So I was like, maybe she fell out. So I called her neighbor. I was like, Hey, have you seen my mother? Can you, you know, can you check on her? So she sent her son Kyle next door and he went next door. He said, call your daughter. She, she left the house and forgot her phone. Mm. I would feel naked I... if I, if I did that. No, those friends I was telling you about earlier when we weren't recording. Yeah. He would leave his phone in his locker at uh at his work. So he couldn't be tracked. So he could so he so he couldn't be tracked, yeah. So he could go out and go to the movies. By oh, himself. so he, he did Life 360. No, my husband I mean, I never asked him to, to do that. I don't Yeah, because he didn't want to argue about it. So he was like, hey, cool, I'll put it on my phone. That's fine. Oh and yeah. Everybody like, yeah, everybody I'm, has I never sent it to Jason, so so he'd leave his phone. So she's like, so you were in the gym working out for four hours. Like, dude, that and still got a belly. <laughs> like, you should be like the rock. Um, like, I'm like that. That math ain't math. And um, yeah. So anyway, those those are, those are some tips. Um, like I said, I think my numbers are are high because I do watch that at night when I wake up. So I've got to work on not yeah. waking up in the middle of the night. Um, like I did on Saturday morning. I woke up at one in the morning. Went to bed at a nice, decent time. Try to, you know, go to bed when my husband goes to bed. And woke up at one. And I think it was up till 9 a.m. Then fell asleep for like an hour or so. And then woke up. So I, I got up. I didn't go anywhere Saturday. But I, I went down and watched football with him all day. And I oh. laid on the couch with a blanket. And I was like, at least I'm not laying in the bed all day. But exactly. I did lay on I did lay on the couch. So. I was telling my wife, when you wake up in the middle of the night, wake me up. Let me put you back to sleep. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> Let me give you that vitamin D. Help oh, you get back to sleep. God. You know what I'm saying? You should just roll over and just nudge your husband. I'm like, hey, oh, hey I need to go I back to not, sleep. I would not, because he gets up at four. So I would not. I, I like, sure. He'd I be do, fine. I cover my head and I have the phone. I have it on the, on the darkest setting. Even though Apple TV... Is still bright. It is. Even when you, I mean, it's very bright. Even when you have the, it turned down to nothing. So I cover my head and I, I watch. What did I watch on Apple TV the other day? Oh, I don't, I don't know what I watched, but anyway. Listen, um, for all the wives that listen to us out here, as speaking for husbands, if you wake up in the middle of the night and you need to go back to sleep, wake us up. We got you. We will do our best to wear you out so you can go back to sleep. You don't got to fight the sleep struggle all by yourself. We're here to help. You How know do you know people want to be awakened? I can tell you. There's not a man out there who would not want his wife waking him up. So really? He can take her down. Would you, could you not definitely. use that language? We, I have to be able to, with a, calm, with a, with oh, a clean sorry. conscience, uh, click that there's no profanity. Well, not profanity, but nothing <laughs> vulgar. Explicit. Explicit, yes, there's not a man alive who would not want to help his wife get back color? to sleep. Yes, he'd want to the help color. cuddle. He'd want to have very intense cuddle sessions to help you go back to sleep. Um, so wow. don't don't fight that struggle by yourself, ladies. Okay. Wake him up. Just reach over. You don't have to say nothing. Just reach over and say hello. So this is going to be a two-parter. Okay, so we're going to do your part first, Shane. So we're 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 doing new beginnings. 
Mm. Right. So our new beginnings are kids are back in school, how you're juggling right. kids, all their activities yes. with work or, you know, being an entrepreneur. And then the second part of that is if you're newly looking for you're in a job search or if you've just started a business. So we'll start off. So it'll be it'll be a two parter since we're Let's go. coming close in time. So all right, so you you handle the first part. Right. So this is the time of year, September, August time where everyone is trying to get back into the group, get out that summer, uh, that summer laziness that we all had going on. We weren't running around, we weren't being uh, pulled in a million different directions, but now all the fun and games are over. School's back. You may have started a new job. Kids are starting new programs as far as like sports and activities and things of that nature. And so now you got to prioritize. For those who are fortunate enough to have a husband and wife duo, uh, you have to decide who's going to go where, who's going to handle what, who's not going to handle what, who's going to miss what. Uh, I think that's something that my wife and I have, you know, have been forced to come into mm -hmm. is who wants to miss what activity because we can't be at both. So someone's going to go to do uh, Ninja Warrior competitions. Somebody else is going to go to AAU basketball competitions. Mm -hmm. And then there are times where we got gymnastics the same weekend as well. And so uh, there were times when my sister was here and she'd have to go handle one of the activities, right? So mm -hmm. she'd take a kid to, uh, she'd normally take them to World of Gymnastics and then somebody else would do AAU and then someone else mm -hmm. would do American Ninja Warrior, whatnot. So it's all about communication and balance. You have to be able to talk to your partner um, if you are fortunate enough to be married. And if you're on solo dolo, and you have multiple kids, multiple activities, you have to create that community within those communities. All right. So if you are in a basketball it takes team, the village. Mm -hmm. yep, it takes a village. So find a neighbor who also is doing that activity. I will yeah. shout out to the moms, shout out to the moms of gymnastics at RSG, because those are some motherfucking carpooling ass moms. Mom. When I tell you, <laughs> now, hey, um, we are fortunate enough to wear like everyone in our in our immediate circles are all married with children. Like we mm -hmm. don't. And so even though these moms are all married, they don't stress. They're like, look, we all kind of live in the same neighborhoods in this one part of town. So it'll be like, okay, on Mondays, you get all the girls, take them to gymnastics. I'll pick them up. On um, Wednesdays, I'll pick them up. You take them. Like, they have they have that really worked out really well. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that is so smart, right? Because that hour and a half, you don't have to be in the car with kids. You can be doing something for yourself. You can be yeah. centering your your cheek and get yourself a little yoga stretch or whatnot. So build that community within your communities, all right? Find out which other parents um, yeah. live in your same neighborhood, live in your same community that they can maybe pick the kids up one day then you take them to the activity the next day or, or maybe, even they don't even have to live in the same neighborhood like for yeah, us it was like they, they, they all did the same or they li you live close, relatively close like when Jay played soccer um, you know there, there were like three, four boys we all lived like within a mile or two so everybody picked yep. the day exactly and then if you are going if you have out of town activities that's going to be a not an overnight activity but it's just like one day or a couple hours away maybe just there's a parent that takes the kids that day i know i've done that where mm -hmm. other parents have had shit to do they be like yo can you grab so and so like yeah he can roll with us all day long right and he'll come and right. roll with us that helps right you have to find balance and and peace and not let these kids run you crazy because right and i always found that. when other kids were around my kids acted better too oh they do because then mm -hmm. they 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 got to put on the front they can't yeah. be whiny they can't be you know nope. complaining no because they got to be, be cool exactly pardon they me mother be... would you please exactly. pass me the grape upon <laughs> is it is it okay is it okay if we consider getting some alternatives for lunch because our friend here is you know has a peanut allergy right actually now. actually <laughs> right so there's that if you have kids now if we're talking about starting new jobs you listen man new jobs is like going to high school for the first time right you don't know where to sit for lunch you or, you don't know who to talk to. or you transfer or you transfer yeah you're transferring to you don't know who to talk to you don't i was a transfer share. student yeah you don't quite know how things work whatever my best advice is just do you right like you got hired for a reason right so you're competent you know how to do your job do your job. The friends part and and being part of the cool kids at work, um, you know that that that'll take care of it. It comes so, with time. Yeah, it comes with time. It could Don't... be like Mean Girls. It could be like Mean Girls at the beginning, though. <laughs> but you got to stand firm on who you are, though. You know, don't yeah. try to don't try to start wearing the same things everybody else wear because you <laughs> see maybe all the women in the office or all the men in the office are wearing the same thing or all the dudes like to go play golf and you hate fucking golf. Don't golf. Suggest something else. We're like, yo, let's go do something else. Right. Like, don't I always say, like, you know, you want to get along with everybody, but you don't want to lose who you are in trying to get along with everybody. Like, stay true to who you are. What got you there? 
and whatnot. And then create that balance. Don't set the standard in the beginning that you're going to work 80, 90 hours a week because they're going to expect you to work 80 hours, 90 hours a week. You know what? The whole goddamn time. Say that again for the cheap seat. <laughs> I'm just saying. How do, and it, to say it to people is like from pe- two people who've done it. But to say that, it just, I mean, it seems like it I know it so sounds tough. Sense. You want to impress everybody and make you, oh, I'm going to no. work you extra. F- don't, don't. You don't. will get work to the bone. You don't. will burn out. It's like dating. You don't want to start doing shit and begin to dating that you don't plan to do the entire fucking time you're together. All well, right? everybody does that, though. But you shouldn't. Why would they do? That's a whole different conversation. Yeah. You should, uh, you should be pay. who you that's are. That, that's, that's for the L. <laughs> In case you haven't noticed, we're going to be setting up a paid Patreon site so we can talk some real shit about real life things or whatnot. We'll tell you all more about that another time. But yeah, and when you start that new job, you want to make sure you set the standard of how you want to behave and work the entire time. So do not, I repeat, do not work 80 hours. Do not work 50 hours thinking, oh, you know, because you're going to get burnt out. You're going to get burnt out so quickly. And, and not appreciate it. And then you'll and be not mad. appreciate it. They're going to mm-hmm. expect you to do it. Yeah. They're gonna feel like, oh, this is just what Joe so and so does. This is what yep. this. This like is what Jane. Like oh, give it, firm. Yeah. give it to Jane. Jane's gonna be here yep. late anyway, so let's just right. give it to her because she's always right. working late. We love Jane. Now, Jane, you're suffering because now you gotta still sit two hours to get back home in traffic. Mm-hmm. You're barely getting any sleep. Your your vitamin deficiencies spiking. You're stressed out. You got anxiety because you've taken on seven projects at work. Mm-hmm. And you don't know how you can get all seven projects done. So now you got to work on the weekends as well. And, and then wait, and what if you have kids? Yeah, and if you have kids, God forbid you got kids on top of all of this mm-hmm. as well. My goodness. So yeah, so please don't uh, act brand new and do things that outside of your purview of continuation. Um, if you can't continue it the entire time you're working there and whatnot. So um, make friends with who you need to make friends with. Create mentorships in new jobs. Um, that's going to help you learn the ropes. Find somebody who's been there a while. Talk to them. Ask a leader to have lunch with you don't be afraid one of the best mentors i had it only lasted for like six months because uh, um my contract ended but i was on contract with the company and then we had a town hall meeting and the mm-hmm. ceo came in and the ceo spoke and after the town hall i went to the ceo i was like hey i enjoyed what you said i aspire to be a ceo one day i would love to set up a mentor mentee relationship with you if that's something mm-hmm. you're open to and he looked at me and he was like no one has ever asked me that since wow. I've become a CEO. He was like, I did it before as a VP and as I was coming up. But since I've been a CEO, no one's ever came up to me. And he was like, most definitely. And he literally, as his secretary, put it on his calendar. And for once a week, for 20 minutes, I got a chance to sit down and talk to the CEO wow. and just pick his brain. And mm-hmm. again, it was only about six months before I had to leave the company because nice. um, the contract ended. But it was dope, right? So shoot your shot again. Just like dating, you see something you want, go after it. Shoot your shot. The worst thing they can say is no. The no. best thing they can say is yes. And you know, you'll you'll be on your way. So create that mentor mentee relationship at your place where you're going to. Um, ingratiate yourself. Find the ERGs that reflect your background and what you want, and uh, get to know those people. They're going to help you get accustomed um, to being in that new situation. They're going to help you understand the ins and outs of that new place as well, man. So you know, I'll say too. Sometimes the companies that I've consulted with ha- had the they had the best ERG programs, had the most problems, but at least you had somebody to to commiserate yeah, with. Listen, everybody in there was talking. Everybody joined the ERG because they all had an issue. They were like, "Look, I need to talk to somebody about this. Right. Where my where my like somebody who understands, at? right? Exactly. Who understands this struggle exactly. that we're going through, right?" Now? Most yep. definitely. You are not in it alone. Yeah. You're not. We in like it. Michael Jackson said, you are not alone. You're not alone. We here. Ain't changing. But we here. At least we can bitch and moan about it together. Mm-hmm. Where's that CEO now? Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't you know, kept up. In what years. is. So what's what's the most valuable thing he, he, he or she told you? It was a he. Trust yourself. If there's trust something. Yourself. Trust yourself. Like your instincts have been developed over whatever, however old you are, your instincts Mm -hmm. have been developed over this course of period for a reason. And so if you have a feeling of something you want to do or don't do, trust yourself. So don't let anybody talk you into doing something that you're uncomfortable with, like taking on projects and such. If you don't feel like you can do a project, don't let somebody talk you into doing the project because you know your capabilities, you know your skill sets. So trust yourself. If If there's a project that you know you can do and people don't think you can do it, 
still step up and ask to do it because you know you can do it. So trust okay. yourself. Whatever the case may be. Either way, trust yourself, trust your instincts because, you know, they're not going to let you down. Most of the time. Most okay. of the time. No, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, everybody's got that spidey sense. Or exactly. That sense where they're like, hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So next week we'll finish it with um, keeping the I faith while the... doing the job search. Hmm? Facts. We're going to do the countdown, the LinkedIn countdown? Yeah. No, no, it's not LinkedIn. It's 11, 11 tips for. Um, oh, okay. I thought that was a positive. LinkedIn. Okay. Ah, no, it wasn't LinkedIn. Mm-mm. Okay. No, it's not from LinkedIn. I don't know where it's from, but anyway. I bet. Yeah, we'll do that next week. Most definitely. All right. So, all right. So that's what's coming up. We'll do that. The two parter. We we'll will do the living single versus friends. We'll do <laughs> got that coming up. And then our pay, our, our, our Patreon, Patreon side. Patreon side. Because yeah. we got some shit to say that y'all should be. <laughs> Y'all should be paying us to hear about. We, you know, we give you advice about how to survive and navigate the corporate world, and you know, little bits of life advice. But we're gonna have a Patreon page where we still talk about the nitty gritties of being married. Right. Like oh my this. gosh, being married in the corporate world. What's that like? Trying to grow your career and still maintain the marriage at the same time, whether it be entrepreneurship or you know, you work in a corporate environment, but you still got a spouse. God forbid, you got kids too. How does this all? How does all this shit balance out? You know, how do you balance work life? What's what is work life balance, and what do you do when that? Yeah, what is, is it? Because it's never, it's, it's never. I've never seen it balance out well, though. You know what? This is. I don't know if this is, says more about me. I, I think that it was a dig at me. But Errol has a job. She works at the cereal lab. It's ice cream place with really expensive ice cream. Little little um milkshake, eight dollars because. That's how much just mm. ice cream costs. So she, when she gets off, like they close at eight thirty most days, and her shift is like four, you know four to eight thirty. But if they're not busy, they clean up and they leave. So like Jackson, I'll say, "Hey, get your sister," but it's like the timing is always off. So yesterday yeah. I was like, she said it was eight, but she's done now. He was across town, and I said, "But Jackson, when she's done, she's standing outside and it's in the dark." He said. Do you know how many times I stood outside in the dark? You're like, listen, you a boy, you know? <laughs> well, I don't remember him standing outside in the dark, though. I think he's full of crap. Are different. I don't know. My he's, mom, he my never, mom forgot I never had him. Time. I never had him standing outside in the dark. He may have waited for me, but you were, weren't waiting in the dark. You might have so, been dusk. Dusk might have started. Yeah, I don't even think it was dusk. Because oh, what, would, what would you be doing late, late at night? You're Maybe either at work, school activities, or... at work or sports. So, right. and he he's hasn't gone to school with any sports forever. He he's back in public school now playing basketball. But anyway, um. So anyway, I call I I, I call bullshit Jackson. Okay, if you're listening. Um. Also, what I think is funny is that the, my neighbors we all had a little um, you know, dinner or snacks on the piazza. Um, last night, yeah, they're fancy, and um, they play when they play basketball. Jackson's six five and a half, and this—he's always been taller than all the other kids. And they always were all the kids against Jackson, <laughs> and they're still doing it. He was playing last night in Crocs. <laughs> oh, that's dangerous. Well, they had on slides and Crocs. Yeah, and that was dangerous. Kids, and kids in playing, Crocs and basketball. I'll that, play basketball. Oh. All the kids against Jackson, which was that's funny. Yo, shout out to that. Jason though, Mr. Jason. You always there for us, man. I was here tweeting. Oh, Jay Bird? Yeah. Yeah. You always out there tweeting. You always out there reposting. You liking our stuff, man. I appreciate you. Sharing. He be sharing. Our oh, you stuff. be sharing. Be appreciate sharing. you. you get, get, <laughs> I heard your TikTok used to be popping. You know what I mean? You know, I we can know. Go we, there. We need Bring to do this about hey, some stuff, stitches or something. Stuff off the dance moves and do a little TikTok for us or something. You know what I'm saying? He you wasn't dancing. He was just silly. Um, Yeah. Maybe we can, maybe we can have uh, Jay do some TikToks for us. Some tick- tickety talks for us. Um, Yo, let's have Jay on the show from a young man's perspective of trying to establish his career. In, yeah, in, in school and entrepreneurship. Like he's yeah, learned some Jay's life lessons thing. already. Jay's he doing is, his thing, man. Yeah, he's learned some life. Le- he's learned some life lessons. So yeah, we can hit when he's maybe when he's um. Yeah, we'll have to. I'll have to ask him if he'll do that. I'm sure he would oblige. So anyway, all right, we are almost at time. So where can they find us? 
where can they find us? You can find us on the uh, on the Twitter or the X, X, as they say. You know what's funny? They called X. But did you ever look at the the bar at top, the address bar? It still, it still says, says Twitter. Twitter dot com. Yeah, doesn't oh. say X. Com. Very interesting. So, um, you can find us on the X. You can find us on the Twitter. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us on any major streaming platform from Streamyard, Spotify. If you don't know how to type us in and find us, if you can't spell for shit and you don't know how to spell two live recruiters, you're like you it's just a two add, with a T. Yeah. Or what? What? How do you do this? Is it two o o? Is it two? You know, if that's bothering you, then just ask Alexa. Ask Siri. They'll tell you. Just They'll, ask. They, they know who we are. We know in these streets. We were, yeah, we are. Yeah. Um, I mean, we got. We fuck with them. We, you know, <laughs> and they fuck with us. You know what I mean? It's a mutual <laughs> fuck with a relationship. So you can find us on there. Um, go shout us out. Listen to us. Like us. Uh, hit uh, subscribe. that subscribe button on every platform you see us on, whether it be Twitter, IG, no matter YouTube. What. We are trying subscribe. to get a million subscribers to get million on subs- YouTube. Yo, we're trying to get that done ASAP. You know, so do what you do to help us do what we do, right. please and thank you. Right. So you can well, get stay great tuned. Content like this. <laughs> stay tuned for more information about our Patreon page. You can hear the, the truth about work life balance and what happens in marriages when you work are um, attempting to do so, or whatnot. So we All are right. here. Well, thanks for tuning in. Thanks, Shane. Appreciate Have a great you. Great week, everybody. <laughs>